Welshman Geraint Thomas is probably not having the Tour de France he hoped for, but he's still a key member of the Ineos Grenadier team. And in this video, we'll take a deep dive into the brand new Pinarello Dogma F that he's racing. But if you're new around here, make sure you like and subscribe. Okay, let's dive in. Before we get into details of Geraint Thomas's bike in detail, let's have a look at the Dogma F that he's racing, because in case you missed it, which you probably didn't, this bike was launched just before the Tour de France, only a few days ago. The Dogma F is the latest in a long line of Pinarello bikes to wear the Dogma name, going right back to the days when it was a magnesium frame before turning into carbon fiber and eventually being ruined the Tour of Victory by Bradley Wiggins in 2012. The updates came thick and fast with the F8, the F10, the F12, and now the new Dogma F. Not the F14, they dropped the numbering convention, so they'll never be an F16, sadly. But in my mind, personally, I think they should drop the letter as well and call it simply the Dogma, the Pinarello Dogma. Doesn't need a letter or a number, the name is enough. It's an iconic bike, it won many, many grand tours over the last few years, and the name alone is enough. So, but that's a change for the bike, just a Dogma F. Visually, the new bike is very similar to the old F12, and if you squint a bit, they do look very similar, but there are some key changes aimed at extracting even more performance from this carbon fiber race bike for the likes of Garrett Thomas to do battle in the Tour de France. The frame set is claimed to be lighter, but the frame is still around 860 grams for the rim brake version and 865 grams for the disc brake version. Most of the same has come with a new fork, handlebar, headset, and 3D printer seat clamp assembly. The Dogma has always been fairly unique in the Pro Peloton and being one bike design be lightweight and aerodynamic, whereas other brands might have a dedicated lightweight bike and a dedicated aero bike, but that's starting to change, like the Specialized Tarmac SL7, which is like the Dogma, both lightweight and aero. And the new bike, the new Dogma F, is of course more aero than the bike it replaces. Pinarello is claiming a nearly 5% improvement for the disc brake version and just over 3% for the rim brake version. And most of those savings are down to a new fork, the reshaped down tube and the flared seat stays, which are perhaps a bigger change from the old F12. So that's the new Dogma F. Let's dive into Garant Thomas's bike in a bit more detail and look at what equipment he's using. So like the rest of the Ineos Grenadier team, he has a regulation red and deep blue paint job that I must admit really works for me. It's one of the better looking bikes in a pro peloton in my mind. It's both bold, but also fairly constrained. It's not boring, but it's not too exciting. It hits the middle ground, really nice, really nice sweet spot for me. So a good looking bike, but do let me know what you think down below. And of course, you can tell this is G's bike by account of the Welsh Dragon proudly displayed on the head tube, really showing his heritage and roots there, and meaning he won't confuse his bike with a now team ride bike uh, outside team bus in the morning when he's going out for a stage of the Tour de France. The new Dogma F is only compatible with a brand new most one-piece aero carbon handlebar. And while I'm not actually out at the Tour de France due to travel restrictions and COVID bubble nightmares, I can't actually measure the bike myself or put on the scales. I can tell from previous bike checks I've done on his bike that he's likely using a 130 millimeter length stem. That's what he's used in the past. And I don't see any reason why he would change that. This new handlebar is very similar to the old version, just as aero, but now much lighter. And as you can tell, all the cables and hoses are rooted inside the handlebar, stem, and into the frame, except on the rim brake version, where the front brake cable goes outside because you can't put that inside the head tube and then into the stem would be impossible. So that's the only cable outside of the frame. Otherwise, they're all tucked away for clean looks and minimal drag. So we know the stem length and we know he likes it slammed, just a very thin spacer between the stem and the head tube, but otherwise slammed, no additional spaces, doesn't have a front end very high at all. And just look at how neat the bar tape is on this bike, very, very tidy, a pat on the back for team mechanics for sure. The Dogma F has an aero seat post with an internal seat clamp, and that's topped by a brand new 3D printed titanium seat clamp assembly, which saves a chunk of weight over the old design. And on top of the seat post, is G's favorite saddle for the last few years, the Physique Arioni. Now the Arioni is a saddle that's been around for well over 10 years. It was a game changer when it launched with a really long design, 
which now looks a bit long compared to their very short nose designs that are very popular, like Specialized Power, for example. So the Ariona is a long saddle. It's the one he's always preferred. If you look back at his bikes over the years, it's always a saddle he's gone for. Nice length. Plenty of room to get right on the nose of a saddle when you're really going hammer and tongs. Uh, plenty of comfort at the back of the saddle as well. And it looks like he has the nose of the saddle slightly down, which I guess is personal preference for the Welshman. The other key contact point on G's bike are the Shimano SPD SL pedals that most of the Ineos Grandia team use. It makes it easier when they're switching bikes. If they're all using the same pedal and cleat system, they can jump on one bike and clip in. Although the saddle height is going to be an issue if G is jumping onto a, a smaller bike. He has a saddle height based on previous bike checks of 787 millimeters from the bottom bracket to the top of her saddle. The group set on the bike is the same as the rest of the Ineos Grenadier team are using, the current generation Shimano Durace Di2. There's been no sighting of the brand new rumored 12 speed group set that I had talked about previously when it spotted at a Belgian race on a DSM team bike, linked to that video up above, where we got a first glimpse of what appears to be the next generation dual race group set. But so far, I've not seen any sighting of it at the Tour of France and none on a team in your screen deer's bikes and certainly not on Geraint Thomas's bike here. So current, tried and tested. If it ain't broke, don't fix it. Dual race DI2. We have a few detailed changes of note. So we have a dual sided parameter which connects to his Garmin Edge computer on an out front mount on that most handlebar. And then for chain rings, he has a rather meaty setup of a 54-42 setup, which I guess is for the flatter stages of the first week of the Tour de France. And I'm presuming that when it hits the mountains, he'll switch to a more conventional 53-39. And his cassette will either be a 11-28 or an 11-30, probably dependent on the stage, where it's flat or where it's hilly, and what he thinks he needs and what his personal preference is for gear ratios. And the other big detail change on this bike, of course, is their use of rim brakes, where the rest of the Peloton, the rest of the World Tour teams in this year's Tour de France have switched over to disc brakes. But Team Ineos Grenadiers are sticking with rim brakes. I'm sure they have their reasons. They're all about marginal gains and deal with testing. I'm sure they have their reasons. I'd love to know the actual reasons and not the rumors that are swirling around the internet around why they use them. But they're using rim brakes, and I'll leave it there. I won't go into a disc brake versus rim brake argument because we all have our sides here, clearly, uh, as evidence in my recent video Link above if you missed that. Now, the other big talking point are wheels. And we've seen Team Ineos Grenadiers switching wheels from their kind of sponsor correct Shimano Durace wheels to other wheels from Lightweight, Aero Coach. And this season, they're using Princeton wheels, a small US company that have a very distinctive rim shape, kind of wavy rim profile. That's a very uh, reminiscent of the Zip uh, Sawtooth rim profile. You might see my review on those wheels, link down below. These are the brand new Peak 4550 wheels. These brand new wheels were released, announced just before the Tour de France at the same time as the Dogma F. And we've seen Team Ineos Grenadier using, racing these wheels in every stage of the Tour de France so far. So clearly they have some arrangements, some sponsorship duties with Shimano. They supply the group sets and they supply the wheels. And I guess that's the reason why this bike has been pictured. This bike was supplied by a team, by a team mechanic, for the photographer out there to photograph. But when it actually comes to racing, they're using those new Princeton wheels. So I'm not really sure on what's going on here, why they're showing bikes with Durace wheels and racing on Princeton wheels. It could be that each team rider has two or three bikes, their main bike and two spares on different team cars, depending on their status within the team. And this might not be his main race bike. This might be spare number two or three. And they don't have enough Princeton wheels to go on every bike just their main race bike and their backup bikes all have Shimano dual race wheels. Bit of a mystery around their wheel choice. I'd love to get a bit more explanation from the team themselves about their wheel choice and just understand the reason why they're choosing their wheels. And it really is a Team Sky in its way and go right back to when they first launched 2010 when they used to put big black barriers around their bus to try and stop people watching their kind of cool down, warming up processes. They're very guarded, they're very secret. Um, a bit of transparency, a bit of honesty, a bit of information about why they're using different wheels would be fascinating to hear. I think we'd all love to know why they're using different wheels. It's clear from the rumors on um, the forums, on the internet, social media, that there's a lot of interest in the wheels they're using. And who thought wheel choice would be such a fascinating, interesting tech observation on a pro bike piece? And the other observation around these wheels, I know we're still talking about wheels here, 
is if you look closely at the hubs, you can see Geraint Thomas has his name sticker on the hub. So clearly each rider in the team has his own allocation of wheels, which seems a bit odd since they're all using the same bikes and the same wheels that each rider has his own allocated wheels. I guess it could be personal preference, maybe over tire pressure, the way the wheels are set up, different cassettes perhaps, or maybe it's just easier with team mechanics have these wheels allocated to this frame and this rider rather than mix and match. So that has been a deep dive into Geraint Thomas's Pinarello Dogma F. I don't know how much it weighs because I'm not actually at the Tour de France. Um, maybe let me know what you think the bike weighs by leaving a comment down below and I'll try and get some of the weight for us out there. But go into details about the wheels, the group set, his personal preference for contact points like saddle and pedals and so on. Um, a pretty good looking bike I think, but what do you think? Let me know by leaving a comment down below. But that's all for now. Thank you so much for watching. Don't forget to like, subscribe, follow me on Instagram and Twitter and stay tuned for more bike checks from the Tour de France over the next few days. I'll see you again soon.